got another Coffee Chat here, another Coffee Chat Friday, and today we're going to be talking about why metabolism slows down as we age. Now, there's a common, there's a common trend that on average, Americans tend to gain 10 pounds of weight every decade after their 20s. They tend to gain 10 pounds of body weight every decade. There's this there's this and there's a lot of a lot of suggestions there that metabolism's slowing down. Now, before we get into this, what we do want to say is this wasn't always the case. I know growing up, I always thought of my grandparents as frail, light, really really skinny. I remember my grandpa used to drink these uh like boost drinks or ensure I don't remember what they were, but they were like they were supposed to help him maintain and gain weight, right? Um, so there is, there's been a recent change in having people gain weight as they get older instead of gaining more frail. So that's, that's worth having in that awareness as we have this conversation as well. But there's, there's a couple different hypotheses for why metabolism slows down as we age. And I'm going to tell you how we can reverse this. The, the most common thing is People usually talk about, about muscle mass loss, right? As you get older, you just lose muscle mass. This is why posture deteriorates and people start to hunch over. This is one of the reasons why people become more frail. And as we know, muscle mass, as, as we've all heard, is a little bit more metabolically expensive than fat is. So as you lose muscle mass, it makes sense that metabolism would go down. In fact, we call this sarcopenia. Sarcopenia being the fancy scientific term for age-related muscle loss. But I was talking with someone this week, and I was revealing to them why sarcopenia is a bit of a myth. It's almost a myth. It's drastically less than we had previously suspected. And again, like I said at the beginning of this, is we look at trends, we can see that this expectation has changed over time about how metabolism should be working for older populations. And there's a story that Jack LaLanne used to share. If you don't know who Jack LaLanne is, he's one of my heroes, one of my icons. He was the godfather of health and fitness, right? He was the one that created co-ed um, fitness centers. He created... Jumping Jacks are named after Jack LaLanne. I uh, did an incredible amount of stuff, had a TV show, I think in the 50s. And when he started teaching people how to exercise, doctors were warning men, especially older men, not to do his exercise programs because he said doctors believe that, that doing exercise, doing resistance training would actually lead to erectile dysfunction, right? They believe that doing exercise would make your dick break. Right, and that's that's we know that's not true anymore. And in fact, we now encourage older populations to do resistance training for the bone density, for the maintaining a muscle mass, for you know just that connection to community. And as that trend has grown, we found that there's some really remarkable stuff. If you take someone that's 80 years old, and they did a study with a bunch of octogenarians. If you take 80 year olds that are not currently physically active and you put them on an exercise program, they'll get stronger. Now that seems really common sense, it seems really obvious, but with the idea of sarcopenia being age-related muscle mass loss, there was this belief that once you hit a certain point, your body was screwed. There was nothing, nothing good to come your way. right? And so the results showing that you can continue to get stronger even in your 80s is remarkable. It shows that sarcopenia is not as dramatic as we believed it was. And with the trends of encouraging older populations to be more active, we're seeing that, it's, that sarcopenia is not as dramatic as we believed it was. There will be, there will be, if you're active from your 20s all the way through your 90s, there will be a gradual drop off. That's unavoidable. But it's not as dramatic as people had suspected. And so when we think about the reason why metabolism slows down as we age, we've always thought it was because of sarcopenia, this age-related muscle loss. But with the change in trends, what we're discovering is it's not. It's the lifestyle factors. 
It's that expectation that grandpa is going to take it easy because he's an old man. So let grandpa sit on his rocking chair or or let help the old lady cross the street or carry the groceries for for the lady across the grocery store. Right. We have these expectations and these standards in our culture where we take it easy on people as they age. We give them the rights and the permissions to deteriorate by voluntary inactivity, right? So what we always believed was age-related, was biological, we're discovering is actually cultural. That age-related muscle loss is actually culturally relevant, not biologically relevant, which is great news. That means we can reverse that trend of slowing metabolisms as we age. Because let's be honest, if you think about when you were a teenager or in your early 20s or late 20s, probably more active than when you were in your 30s and 40s, right? You probably walked around more. You probably played a little bit more. You're probably more physically active. And that is the reason why metabolism changes. It's not because your body changes. It's not your physiology. It's your sociology. It's your, your habits, your expectations, the standards that we allow people to live in changes as we get older. We encourage people to take it easy. We encourage people to, to, to offload on the youngers, right? We encourage younger people to do stuff for older people so that they don't need to. But the reality is if you allow yourself to fall into that habit of offloading physical activity, of offloading your, your exercise, then your body starts to get decrepit. It's when you have that expectation that you can offload it, that's when we get what we thought was biological. What we're discovering is sociological, it's not biological. So the, the real reason why metabolism slows down as we age is because typically we slow down as we age. But if we can stay active, if we can continue to exercise, if we can maintain muscle mass through resistance training, if we can, if we can be active in, in non-sedentary, if we don't relegate ourselves to the lazy boy uh, recliners and we actually enjoy weekend activities, maybe hikes or walks or bike rides, if we stay active, we can keep an active metabolism. It doesn't have to be a biological loss as we age. It's most often a lifestyle loss as we age. We fall into different habits and that impacts the metabolism more than, than our biology. So that is the real reason why metabolism slows down and what you can do to prevent that as you get a little bit older because look, let's be honest, it's going to happen to us. We're going to get older. We can't stop that. But like it says in the Rebel Oath, if we love ourselves and act accordingly, loving ourselves, taking care of ourselves, being active, eating good food, right? That's a way that we can act in our best self-interest, in our own best self-love, and that's how we can maintain our metabolism as we get a little bit older. So let me know in the comments, is this surprising or does this make sense? Did you believe that metabolism was purely biological or does this idea about it being sociological make it make more sense for you and, and give you something that you can be aware of and work to reverse as you get a little bit older so you don't have to be like Grandpa Frank and, and sucking down um, drinks to try to be less frail or or all, all the detriments and, and decrepitness we see in older populations unnecessarily. So let me know. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Hopefully this opened some new ideas. Hopefully this gave you not only new views, but also extinguished that excuse that you can often make as, ah, that's just the way it is. I'm just getting older. It's not the way it is. We can reverse that, we can take control, and we can do the positive habits that keep us younger longer. And if you want more information, I strongly recommend, we did a book club with my clients and I um, two months ago. We read the book, Younger Next Year by Crowley and Lodge. Fantastic book, cannot recommend it high enough, but it kind of goes into what we can do as we get a little bit older to ensure that we don't feel like we're getting older as we do it. So that's all I got for you this week. Make sure to come on back next week. Next week's real, uh, coffee chat will be a little bit earlier. I've got a 9 o'clock or a 10 o'clock appointment that i got to go into a different town for. Um, so it'll probably be a little bit earlier. But I'll be back for another coffee chat with you next Friday. And until I do, you know what to do, Rebel. As always, keep the oath.